My Hero Academia is a show that has exploded among anime fans, and it makes sense. Fun characters that include shining heroes and underhanded villains, all brandishing a power capable of great help or devastation. But is this world of quirks as black and white as it seems? I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is My Hero Academia Good to Evil. For this list, we'll be covering the most well-known characters that have appeared throughout the two movies and four seasons of content. Characters will be ranked based on heroics and personal morals. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble character and working our way down. These characters are the good. Taking our gold medal of good, we have Eri. Tormented for years by Chisaki, she was kept in the dark about what she could do and what she was fully capable of. She was raised to believe that she caused nothing but pain and death, and so denied being rescued at first to spare Mirio and Deku. When Eri did gain enough courage to trust the heroes that came for her, she offered her power to Izuka and healed him through his fight, making it possible for him to use one for all at 100%. Next up, we have the two children from Heroes Rising, Katsuma and his older sister, Mahura. Featured in the second film, they were children on the island that had become close to both Bakugo and Izuko. Mahura is seen having a lot of doubt in Class 1A's abilities, but Katsuma makes it clear his ultimate dream is to be a hero, and he shines through in the film in a way not many children would in these stories. Using his gift of cell regeneration, to heal Midoriya and Bakuga after their initial confrontation with Nine. And when the villain reappeared, the two kids were seen giving first aid to Shoji, who had been trying to get them to safety. Next up, we have Mirio, also known as Lemillion. When someone states their life goal is to save a million people, it's hard to see them as anything but good. Mirio is dubbed one of the big three on UA's campus, far surpassing many of his peers with his quirk. His efforts were so impressive he was even taken in by Night Eye's agency, being seen as a worthy successor of One For All by All Might's own former sidekick. He helped to further Izuku's dream of following in All Might's footsteps, offering advice on how to impress his mentor. Mirio risked his life to take on Chisaki alone until help arrived, and even without his quirk, went on to make sure Eri stayed happy and safe. Taking our next spot, we have Izuku. The one telling this story, he strives to be the kind of hero that saves people with a smile. His whole story is one of determination and perseverance. Even before he was gifted with one for all, Izuku was driven to help people. In the first episodes alone, he proved himself by rushing in to save Bakugo from a sludge-based villain. When he began training, Izuku made it clear that he wasn't interested in doing the bare minimum to barely scrape by. He wanted to thrive at UA. Throughout the series, we've seen Izuko save numerous people even at the risk of his own life and hero career. He's also served as an example and inspiration for his peers. Even Bakugo, who claims to despise Deku, sees Izuku as a worthy successor and hero. Next is the once symbol of peace, Yagi, better known as All Might. He was the number one pro hero for years and he took the job seriously going on even with his body breaking down. He not only trained Midoriya every waking moment they could before the entrance exam, but also offered as much advice as he could to the other students, especially Bakugo. He steps up to protect Class 1A when the League of Villains shows up and uses the last of his power before retiring to defeat All for One. Even towards the end of his time as an active hero, we see the influence Yagi had on countless people, from young aspiring heroes to the police to the civilians, even villains such as Stain. All Might was the ultimate figure of peace and justice. Next, we have the hothead, Katsuki. Known for his short temper, he was a little tough to place. Like many his age, his ambition is everything to him and he often doesn't think about the long-term effect of his words or actions. It leads him into some tough spots and he is called out for his poor manners when running rescue drills. Unlike Izuku, he has no interest in coddling anyone but that doesn't make him evil by any means. We also see that Katsuki is insightful. Though he doesn't do well around children, he has a clear understanding for how they think, able to spot the ringleader of the misbehaving grade schoolers easily. Bakugo was a driving force in both films, showing off his ability to quickly assess a situation and even sacrifice part of his weaponry to escape a villain's grasp. Next up is the hero, Fatgum. 
Optimistic, friendly, and motivating are the words that come to mind when he appears. We get to know him during his time helping Karishima with his work study and it's easy to see why he's used for the program. While he isn't the flashiest pro, he makes a point of taking down enemies while causing as little collateral damage as possible. He makes a point to explain his methods to Karishima and Tamaki, expressing that when one's will to fight is broken, they've already lost. He's seen having plenty of snacks on hand for his own quirks use and making friends when patrolling, but he also makes an effort to have a variety of foods that come in use with Tamaki's power. Fat Gum is also one of the few heroes we see try to make some sort of connection with the villain in order to understand their motivation and make them less likely to attack, which is an interesting way to approach an enemy. Next is the hero known for being as manly as he can, Karishma. He wasn't always the bravest among his peers, in fact many of the people he went to middle school with thought he would be too weak to get into UA. But you wouldn't think that looking at how he takes on multiple threats throughout the series. Krishma rose through the ranks at the sports festival and shined in his work-study program saving Tamaki from being seriously wounded. He dove to try and protect Aizawa when they raided Shisaki's hideout, not realizing Fat Gum was already jumping into action. Unlike Izuku, Karishma isn't looking to be the number one hero. He only wants to help, despite where he might fall in the ranks. Next up is another member of the big three, Tamaki. His anxiety can get the better of him, but he uses Mirio, Fat Gum, and Karishma as inspiration to push on when in doubt. During the rescue mission to save Eri, Tamaki stayed behind to take on three powerful villains, so there was a better chance of the mission succeeding. He's also resourceful and quick thinking, pushing on to the point of collapsing. Next up is All Might's former sidekick and Mirio's mentor, Night Eye. We drop him a little lower due to his reluctance to let Yagi continue his career as All Might. We aren't saying that Night Eye is in the wrong for this, he was a man trying to protect his friend from a gruesome fate, but that determination to see one for all passed on also led to Night Eye being brutal towards Midoriya, showing any reluctance to train the young teen. Even with Mirio and Gran Torino insisting Zuku's power was impressive, Night Eye made it clear who he thought should have been All Might's successor. In the end, he does see Izuku's worth as a hero, flat out stating that Deku changed the future through his determination. Night Eye's end was a tragic one with him sustaining major injuries to save a tortured young girl. Even in his final moments, Night Eye tried giving Mirio hope, using his future vision to let the young man know he would be the finest hero. Next up we have the son of Endeavor, Todoroki. His emotions when it comes to his dad always run hot and cold, and who can blame him? But this does result in him being unstable to really grasp his power at the beginning of the series. It takes a tearful Midoriya to yell the obvious fact that it's his power before he actually tries using it. Luckily, he managed to learn a lot since that fight, showing an appreciation for his peers and what they're capable of but we do see him struggle the moment his father is brought up. By the end of the fourth season, we see Todoroki beginning to overcome his past and being used as a tool by his father. Only time will tell if he can manage to be the hero he actually dreams of being, but our hopes are high for him. Next, we have model student Ida. With him being displayed as ever vigilant and eager to learn, always willing to hear out a different perspective, why is he dropped so low on our list? Well, for one arc in the show in particular, his need for revenge. It's hard to hold that against him too much since he clearly was hurt by seeing his older brother, his idol, hurt by the infamous hero killer. He did overcome this rough part of his life, learning from his mistakes and offering his friends emotional support after having experienced how awful one can become bottling everything up. Ida strives to be a great leader and role model, always pushing for the best from his peers. Next up is Momo Yayuruzu. Momo's quirk gives her the ability to create any non-living material slash object from her exposed skin by transforming the molecular structure of her fat cells. In order to create something, she needs to understand the molecular structure of what the material slash object is made of. She can create weapons for fending off villains, blankets and supplies for civilians caught in the crossfire, and tools to help her fellow heroes from getting hurt while fighting. Momo has a habit of pushing herself past her limit to make sure everyone around her has all that they need. On top of that, she takes her role as a student very seriously and rather than mocking her classmates, is always up for hosting study sessions to make sure everyone is at the top of their game. She approaches everything with an optimistic attitude and is rarely ever discouraged when in a tough spot. Next we have the last member of the big three, Nejure. 
Using her power Shockwave, we haven't been able to see much of her in action. When we do see her, we learn that she's a quick strategist and is able to recognize the abilities of her fellow heroes when on the field. She aided in taking down Chisaki's hideout and helped to uplift Mirio after he lost his quirk and mentor. Next on the list is the electrifying Denki Kaminari. He's not given much love in the beginning, but he's slowly proven his potential, especially in later episodes as he develops special attacks and utilizes tools to help target his shocks. But Denki isn't only talented at offense and holding back an enemy. In the second film, we see Kaminari use his powers to not only help power broken down vehicles on the island, but he works with Momo to help gather supplies for the residents after the blackout by charging batteries for them. He also uses his own body as a lightning rod to redirect an attack from Nine, giving Izuku and Bakugo a chance to wear the villain down. Next on our list is the bubbly Mina Ashido. She served as inspiration for Karishma when he was going for UA and takes a lot of joy in hyping up her classmates. She makes sure to include everyone as much as she can and dives into conflict even at the risk of her own well-being. We see in flashbacks her telling off bullies and quickly turning them into friends instead, and we witness her getting in between her friends and a threat by directing the potential villain to a police station when he demanded directions. She's driven by trying to gain allies and subdue enemies in a way that won't kill them if she can manage the task, as seen when taking on one of Nine's henchmen. Next is the anti-gravity heroine, Uraraka. She gets a lot of grief among the fanbase for her motivation to become a pro. When asked, she states that her family grew up not having much and she only wanted to sign with a good agency so she could take care of her family. While that may not sound as glamorous or selfless as some of the goals of her classmates, it's an honest dream and one that clearly means a lot to her. And though she's not looking to be the next number one, she never slacks off when on a job or performing in class. Next up is Aoyama. While a belly button laser show doesn't sound like much of a power on the surface, Aoyama has shown through the latest episodes that he isn't going to back down, even if his body insists on breaking in the middle of the fight. He reveals to Midoriya that much like himself, Aoyama's body simply isn't built for his own quirk. And because of that, he has a great deal of respect towards Deku. After this vulnerable moment, we can see a clear change in how Aoyama approaches his training in hero work. In Heroes Rising, we get to see his development of his power, Supernova, as he tries to hold back Nine from getting to Katsuma and Mahara. Even with Momo carrying him, he still insists on using his power to help how he can, and that gives him a pretty high spot on our list. And rounding out our good section, we have Shoji. Don't let the mass of limbs fool you. This guy isn't interested in being the source of anyone's unease or nightmares. In fact, most of the time we see Shoji offering protection and aid to those around him. He kept Su from freezing to death, tried rushing Izuku to safety when they were confronted by the League of Villains, and attempted to get Katsuma and his sister away from Nine. Though his quirk gives him many advantages, he tends to be more of a human shield or stretcher. And with that said, we've arrived at the neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray area. The next listing might break some hearts, but we have to place Sensei Aizawa in the gray area. Hardened by a life of training, generations of students, and being a pro himself, he's a very strict and to the point man. What makes him stand out is that the creator of the series himself claimed that Aizawa was meant to be an embodiment of all he disliked about himself. Yet this teacher is one of the most respected and beloved among the series. He is incredibly protective of his students, making it clear that safety is the priority and that to be a good hero, they have to know their limits. Most of the time he's seen scolding Class 1A for trying to bite off more than they can chew, and is quick to step in when he's proven correct. But he's also shown to have a lot of trust in their capabilities. Speaking up for Yuraka and Bakugo, when they fought during the sports festival and allowing a portion of his students to aid with saving Eri. Next up is Principal Nezu. He's an odd guy, sometimes seen laughing maniacally as he enjoys a cup of tea. But weird or not, he clearly cares for not only his students, but his staff. He shows outright concern for All Might's health when the man insists on using his pro form to teach, 
stating if it was painful, he should just ease up. Nezu also pleads with the police force in Season 4 to allow the festival to give their students a ray of hope in a time when the status of heroes and villains is being doubted. Next is the tinkering genius of general studies, Hatsume. Though she isn't seen performing many grand feats, she takes her role as support very seriously. We see when she's aiding Izuku on his gloves and iron soles that she makes a point of understanding a client's quirk, and how they utilize it and how it can be improved upon. She even makes the comment when handing him his gloves that she made sure it'll meet his needs and match his costume because a real artist meets their client's needs on the first go. Next we have a hero known for his blistering winds and booming voice, Inase. He's a bold personality who is typically friendly with everyone he meets. We place him lower only due to his performance when forced to work with Todoroki and his short-sightedness, but he's easily shaken from when confronted with any sort of resistance, such as when Todoroki initially rejected his friendship or when the grade schoolers accused him of not being a real hero. Next we have the second ranked hero, Hawks. There is no doubt that Hawks enjoys being the one to cause a fuss, even if he denies it. He outright insults his fellow pros on stage when the ranking for the top 10 are announced, stating their input was nothing but good public relations material. But he's also quick to take in information, being the first to realize in the second film that the SOS signal was being sent from the students of Class 1A, and organizes a rescue team as soon as possible. Moving on to All Might's former teacher, Gran Torino. Much like Bakugo, he's a no-nonsense guy. He can be hard to get along with and his methods are seen as brutal and unforgiving, with Gran Torino believing that most students need to learn the hard way to catch on quickly. Though he can come off as harsh, his way of doing things is effective. As a hero, he thrives not only in roles of aid, but also leadership, providing both offense and defense. Next, we have to mention Best Genist. His style is one that comes into question a lot, but Genist's views on how to conduct yourself as a hero makes sense. He believes firmly that one has to be aware of how they appear to the public, which is something he tried teaching Bakugo when training him attempting to get the teen's short temper in check. He put himself in a near-death situation when they took out the League of Villains hideout, falling from his place among the top 10 when he was placed in a comatose state after using too much of his power. Next is the unique villain, Gentle Criminal. We realize that he and Labrava are meant to be bad guys. They are not exactly on the same tier as the League of Villains or Chisaki's henchmen. Deku has stated that this was a difficult opponent for him, not only because of Gentle's abilities, but because his story was a relatable one. And Izuku acknowledges that it would have been easy to become a man like Gentle had things gone wrong. Gentle turned himself in to spare his love from being punished with him and even in defeat, granted a lot of respect to Izuku, telling the aspiring hero that he hoped he could reach who he was trying to help. Next up is Seiji. He has an interesting enough quirk, able to manipulate his flesh and control it even when it's detached. But unfortunately, Seiji is more used for commentary than combat. He's one of the students that fails the initial portion of the licensing exam and is then allowed to critique his peers in the final stages. At times, his bitterness and superiority is astounding, even to the instructor sitting next to him most of the time. We will give credit that Seiji is a capable fighter and has an understanding of how to approach various types of obstacles, but that does little good when he constantly underestimates his adversaries. Next, we're placing the new number one hero, Endeavor. His low ranking is for obvious reasons. He married a woman simply to gain the strongest offspring. His desire and frustration to be the number one pro resulted in him training Todoroki to a near breaking point. He abused and neglected his wife and children while still trying to be seen as a man better than All Might. Towards the end of season four, Endeavor makes a point of trying to connect with his youngest son, telling Todoroki he wishes to be someone he can be proud of. We would like to place him lower on the list for his past actions, but an attempt at redemption is better than nothing. And though he isn't the ideal husband or father, he is still a man that has defeated numerous villains and saved countless people. And with that said, finally, we've reached the dark side. These characters are the bad and the evil. Taking the first spot in our evil section, we have the hero killer, Stain. Stain was one of those villains that made a good point about how society viewed heroes and how quirks were treated, which made him someone fans could relate to. Stain took to killing any hero that was deemed fake, 
He hated how people tried to gain the status of pro simply for fame and money, believing firmly that a hero's first priority should be protecting people and not stroking their own ego or filling their bank account. This led to a few interesting interactions with him. He called out Lita in his need for revenge, making the argument that he, as a hero, should have been more concerned with saving Native. When Stain was confronted by Deku, he gave Izuku a chance to flee which he declined, and for that he complimented the young teen by saying he was a true hero like All Might and earned the right to be spared. We're placing two deranged killers together, Toga and Twice. Once they both join the league, they are seen aiding one another and sharing the same wavelength. Twice was driven to insanity after a nine day long trial of being trapped with various clones of himself, with all of them killing one another until he was the last one standing. He admits to himself that he's not sure if he is the real him, and it made it easy for him to fall into a life with the League. For Toga, she lacked structure and joined because she wanted to be able to do whatever she pleased. Her fascination for blood and love of violence catered the rest. Next on our list is more of a secondary villain, Atsuhiro aka Mr. Compress. His influence is taking a supportive role for whatever the League of Villains has planned. His quirk means that he is able to compress various objects into marbles, which can be used as he pleases. This makes him a pro at setting traps, creating obstacles, and kidnapping people with little to no effort. He was a core member of the plan to kidnap Bakugo and Tokoyami, and was the reason some villains were able to escape from Best Genist when the hideout was discovered. He also made an attempt to attack Chisaki when the man killed Magma, resulting in him also being attacked and losing part of his arm. Next is the main antagonist in the first film, Wolfram. With his use of metal manipulation, his goal was to take the power of One For All to use it to destroy All Might. Aside from his goal of defeating the former number one hero, we don't know a lot of his background or ambitions. We do learn he was good at staying under the radar, able to use David with the scientist being kept in the dark about the villain's true intentions. Next, we have the main villain of the second film, Nine. Like All For One, he has the capability of using multiple quirks thanks to being able to steal any he finds useful. Nine's quirk allowed him to control the weather, allowing him to summon destructive thunderstorms in an instant, and even create a powerful tornado with himself at the epicenter. But because the power of that quirk was so big, his body was being deteriorated on a cellular level. In an attempt to cure this detriment, Nine donated his body to the League of Villains, and underwent a procedure wherein he was injected with the DNA of All For One, acquiring the same ability to steal quirks as a result, although his variant limited Nine to taking eight other powers. Fortunately, he was limited to only nine quirks, including his own, and the breakdown of his body slowed down his progress. Nine was like many other villains in the show, wanting to create a world where the strong were dominant and the people were united under a new order. Moving on, we have Dobby. Not much has been revealed of his backstory as far as the anime goes, so we don't feel right placing him lower on this list. What is revealed in the show thus far is that Dobby is a member of Shigaraki's crew and aided in the kidnapping of Bakugo and Tokoyami. More than a couple of times, we see a pro confronting Dobby about charred bodies all over the city, quickly piecing together that he's the man responsible. Next up is the successor for All For One, Shigaraki. Much like Eri, Shigaraki was a tormented child that suffered abuse and neglect. He's a determined hero that is driven by the need to be the top villain because that was the purpose he was given. He makes it clear he likes to run the show, but much of what happened to Tamura was beyond his control. Unlike some villains that want to reshape the world to their own benefit, Shigaraki is content with wiping everyone out. Though the hands that make up his costume are the preserved remains of his family, Shigaraki is shown to have an attachment to the henchmen that serve under him. He forms an almost familial bond with Toga and Twice in particular, and part of his motivation for destroying Chisaki's quirk was because of the way Overhaul had murdered Magna and injured Compress. 
Our bronze medal of evil goes to Docker. Though we have yet to see too much of him in the anime thus far, we give him a low spot due to his work with All for One and the League of Villains. His quirk Life Force gives him the advantage of maintaining his youthful appearance, or youthful by typical standards, and gives him more time to work on finding ways to steal other quirks. We see him in Heroes Rising, aiding Nine and giving Shigaraki the order to move the aspiring villain. There are already a lot of theories surrounding this character concerning his actions in the manga, but we'll save those for an updated ranking and see what he has in store for us. Taking the silver medal of villainy, we have Chisaki, also known as Overhaul. We would say he should get the blue ribbon for world's worst father, but he outright admits he's not really Ares' dad. So good job, Endeavor. You haven't been replaced. But that doesn't excuse Chisaki's actions while Ari was in his care. He saw the world as something that was disgusting and needed to be purged, using Ares' body to make bullets that could wipe out another person's quirk. His merging with an underling to gain power was something that resembled the gross misuse of fusion in Steven Universe, using the ability to get in Ares' head and make her submit to being a prisoner. Luckily, Chisaki got what he deserved. Not only was he imprisoned by the heroes, but his own quirk was taken away by Shigaraki, making Overhaul incapable of harming anyone else with his power. And finally, taking the gold medal of atrocity, we have All for One. All Might had deemed him the ultimate evil and had used the last of his power to have his enemy subdued and imprisoned. Even when locked up, this enemy has a chilling air surrounding him, and we don't think that's due to the lack of heating in the prison. There's something extra haunting about a villain who can hold a civil conversation with an opponent and still turn around and attempt to murder them. All for One is definitely one of those high tier baddies. Aside from being ridiculously overpowered with a ton of resources at his disposal, All for One also knows how to manipulate someone's mind. He chose Shigaraki knowing All Might would be conflicted fighting him, and he offered to give Ragdoll her power back only if he could be free long enough to use his other abilities. He knows exactly what to say to make his offers tempting and his foes vengeful. But what do you think? Who are the most heroic and villainous characters of My Hero Academia? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.